Let's go ahead and create an additional function now. We'll create the square function. So we'll use our calculator helper here and we'll say calculator dot square equals function and of course we only have to reference x and we'll do x times x. Better return that. Come back to our browser. Forgot a step. We need to now reference this. So this is square.js. Let's take a look at our calculator object now. See if we have our square function. And we do. Let's just test it. So we have calculator.square and we're going to square up 5. And we get 25. Perfect. Seems to be working just fine. However, although this is a basic example, we already have a function here for multiplication. So I'd like to use multiply. We have our calculator dot multiply and we'll put x and x in there. So will that work? Refresh. Let's square up 5. It does work. So we're, we're staying dry. We're not reinventing the wheel. We, we've gone ahead and reused our multiply function. Let's just make sure that I can still reorder these. So I'll put our brand new square function at the beginning and refresh. And let's see. Square. And our function works. All right. Now the developer decides, you know what, I don't need the multiply function at all. I'm only using square, divide, add, and subtract in my application. Let me get rid of multiply. Refresh our browser. Try the square function. Error. Let's see what it says. Undefined is not a function evaluating calculator.multiply. So it's pretty obvious what happened. Square requires the multiply function. Multiply function is not there. It fails. It didn't give us a load error because it found square.js. And inside the square function, it's asking for calculator.multiply which does not exist because we uh, excluded the reference to multiply.js. Now I know I have to define multiply whenever I want to use square. Now square relies on or depends on multiply. Okay, so we, we have this as a requirement. Not, not too big of a deal. Um, it's basic. Um, I can manage that. But imagine this calculator getting incredibly complex. Or imagine it not being a calculator at all. It's it's managing your shopping cart or it's managing some application function that's fairly complex and uh, important to your business. This starts to become an issue. Where does the AMD pattern come into play? How does this help us? Going back stands for asynchronous module definition. The asynchronous part just really means in how these files are loaded. The module is, you can think of add, subtract, multiply, and divide as modules. One of the major strengths of the AMD pattern or implementation of the AMD pattern is dependency management or dependency resolution. Let's rewrite this using require.js, which is an implementation of the AMD pattern for the client side. So I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of rewriting the five calculator functions we've already gone through, and this time making them modules. And I'm complying with the required JS specification, which closely matches the comma JS specification of the AMD pattern. Let's quickly go through those and, and take a look at the, the difference. So you'll see here I have this define, function, return, function, return, such and such. Well, this is really the, the meat of the function that we wrote here, and this is for add. So you can see I, I have my x and y uh, parameters, adding those two together, returning them. Same thing for subtract, x minus y, multiply x times y, divide x divided by y. Okay, so what this define, though, is it's defining the module. And it's taking on the name of the JavaScript file here as the name of the module. If we come back and look at the uh, index.html, you'll notice uh, one thing I'm doing here is, uh, I, first of all, I got rid of all of the script references that we had earlier. And now I'm just referencing the required JS library. That is the implementation of the AMD pattern that we're using. I'm adding one attribute to the script tag, and that's data-main. And I've set it equal to app. So what, what does that do? Well, this is the first file or the first module, rather, that require.js is going to run after require.js loads. By default, it's going to look at the same directory as require.js. So here's require.js, 
and here's app.js. Remember, it's looking for the name, so it's not going to include the, the .js. What do we do from this point? If we take a look at our application, you know, we don't have calculator, we don't have add, none of, that, none of that exists. So what we need to do is say, all right, I want to use a particular function. And the way you do that, and this is not going to be a session on required JS, that's a, another one I've already done you should take a look at. But I want to show you the strengths here. I'm going to go ahead and say, I need the add function. Now I'm going to say, I get to use the add function that has been provided to me, and I'll just write it to the console add one and six see if this works and it doesn't I get this error but notice what the error shows it says the request URL was not found on the server add.js okay now we come back of course that's right add.js is on in the calculator folder well if you remember before what we did is we used the calculator object as kind of a namespacing you can do the same thing here slightly different fashion I don't know why calculator is such a hard word for me to type and talk at the same time. But this is really kind of the folder slash file reference, but you can consider it a namespace slash module name reference. Now let's go back to the browser, and sure enough, we get seven. We get the result of our calculation here, one and six. Looking at this again, we're asking RequireJS to load us this dependency. This is an array of dependencies, and then we're mapping that locally to this function add I, I could say a if I wanted to say a here come back refresh sure enough we get it just just so uh, you know it's working we'll add 11 and 6 and we get 17 so that so that's working now I can easily say let's let's do subtract as well so I'll say calculator subtract and I'll just locally call that sub for example and console log sub and we'll take 12 minus 5 come back to our browser refresh and we get 7 12 minus 5 is 7 change the value 18 minus 5 get 13 that's working and if I show you the network activity here, uh, or at least in the JavaScript console for Safari, it shows us the files that have been loaded. Index.html, of course, that's our HTML document. The CSS document, in this case, I'm using Twitter Bootstrap. The RequireJS library. App.js, which is the first file to load right after it require. You remember that from the data-main attribute. The add function and the subtract function. And they've all been loaded for us. What if I go ahead and reverse the order of these here, of these dependencies? those in there. Of course I now need to reverse these, the, how they're mapped, refresh it. Now I get subtract before add. So we're getting somewhere. It, that seems to work. Order doesn't matter. It's easy. It's loading them up whenever I ask for them. I ask for that functionality. So me being the developer of this particular application, I write a function and I ask for the functionality to be managed for me or, or the dependencies to be managed for uh, for me and provided to me and that's exactly what's happening here now I could change this to multiply okay multiply and I'll I just I'll just keep the a there just to show you that it does work we'll go to console so we have a 66 so 11 times 6 is 66 and if we look at our network activity here we have subtract and multiply Great, it, it loaded exactly what we needed to subtract and multiply. Remember square? We have square is multiply x times x. We take in one parameter. But notice here I have an array here of one, one value, calculator slash multiply. Just like we do in app.js where we have calculator slash subtract, calculator slash multiply, which is our name spacing. I, these are dependencies to this uh, app.js function. I'm now saying multiply is a dependency of the square function. And I'm mapping it to the, the multiply word here, or uh, uh, parameter. Multiply xx. Okay, so let's see how that works. If I go to app.js, and let's say I call this square. And we'll say this is uh, sq. Let me put these in the right order uh, so it kind of makes more sense. Okay, 
So we're going to subtract 18 and 5, and then square 11. Come back here, we'll go to the console. 11 squared is 121. So that worked. It, it squared it up for me. I'm only asking for subtract and square. Coming back to our index HTML, we're loading require, and then immediately loading app.js. App.js is looking for subtract and square. I'm subtracting 18 and 5 and squaring 11. Square has a dependency on multiply. So let's come back, refresh, take a look at our network, and we have app, subtract, square, multiply. It loaded multiply for us as a dependency of square. It, it loaded them. It didn't matter. It didn't matter uh, that I hadn't referenced it here in this main application. The module stood on its own and referenced its own dependencies. So here's square and it references multiply. And you can see instead of doing the calculator dot multiply, I'm doing calculator slash multiply, but it allows me to group my functions here. So there's some amount of uh, dependency management uh, here in your folder file structure and also in how you reference them. This this can be con further configured and I won't go into that now, but I'm using the, all the conventions or I should say only of what I've used today are conventions. Very easy, minimal setup here in our HTML file. The app is just asking for what it needs and each module then in turn asks for what it needs. And I don't have to ask for all of those dependencies from the HTML perspective, just from the modules themselves. And by the way, app.js is in itself a module. It's called app.js. Thanks very much, and I hope you can see that with the uh, AMD pattern, what we're able to do is eliminate many of the script references. We are no longer encumbered by the order in which the scripts are referenced. So if you think of jQuery and you have a lot of plugins, it really doesn't matter what order you load the plugins. You can load a plugin that depends on jQuery before jQuery is loaded because the modules reference their dependencies themselves. The uh, implementation of the AMD pattern in this example, require.js, will automatically load the dependencies uh, when they're needed. Please be sure to check out my other video on require.js. Thanks very much.